I guess it's been a couple weeks now. But I remember when um, when my dad, he um, he called me up one day and uh, we were talking for a little bit and he goes, he goes, have you, um, and we were talking about biblical, you know, things and, you know, we, we talk a lot about the Bible and, and whatnot. And, uh, and you mentioned, you said, um, you said, have, have you heard about, um, about Asbury, Kentucky? And um, I said, no, I haven't. And I said, what's going on up there? And he said, um, he said, well, there certainly looks like God has decided to one day show up. You know, that's what God does. He shows up in the most unlikely places, doesn't he? But he shows up where there's a willing heart. And that's kind of what I want to talk about today. I, I, didn't, I didn't realize. I know I'd been struggling with so many things for a lot of years. And I would get a little bit of headway. And, um, and, and I would move forward, you know, move forward in some areas in my life where I really needed God, really needed his help, his hand of mercy and deliverance. But I could never seem to turn the corner. And before I go any further, I think it's very important to acknowledge and recognize the spirit of Yahweh. Because we always need to recognize the spirit of Yahweh. He's the spirit of truth and the spirit of life. And without him, we don't have anything. Without Yeshua, we have nothing. Without the Father, we have no home. And Father, I want to recognize you. I want to recognize your holiness and your righteousness. your mercy and your forgiveness and your love. Father, thank you for life. Thank you for your spirit and thank you that you don't abandon us. Thank you that you don't leave us alone. Thank you that you don't leave us to find our own path. But you are constantly before us, showing us the way. If only we would open our eyes and see you. What the world calls difficulties, you call freedom. But what the world calls freedom, you call bondage. And may all of us who hear this and myself, humble ourselves before you. May we all cry out for mercy. May we all repent before you. And may we all seek holiness and righteousness. As you said in Psalm 24, who will ascend to your holy place? Those who have a clean hand, clean hands and a pure heart. And may you wash our hands clean by your blood. And may you purify our hearts by your spirit. May we, may we take no credit for anything that is spoken, anything that is said, because we have no abilities of our own. 
And all is you and all is in you. And all will forever be you. Father, I give you glory and honor and praise for everything that you have done in my life. For every path and every direction that you are leading. May I and may we who call ourselves believers in you persevere until the end. May we rely on you. May we say Yeshua is enough. In your holy name, Father. You know, I was, I was there, and you know, and I started, I started looking at these, these, uh, these videos. And, uh, you know, of what was going on. And every time, every time I would watch one of these videos, it was so beautiful. Because even through the, even through these live streams and these videos, you could sense the spirit of Yahweh. Now, regardless of what people want to say. We know truth. Those who have the spirit of Yahweh within us know truth. Because he's the spirit of truth. And I remember one night I was so affected. Because I keep saying, when there's a move of God and when there's a genuine move of God, we don't want to miss it. We don't want to be the skeptics on the side. Now, the Bible says, test the spirits, absolutely. Yeshua himself said, by their fruits, you will know them. And what are the fruits? The fruits are repentance. Salvation. Healing. Now, all these things. I found myself early one morning. It's three o'clock, three, four o'clock in the morning. I don't I don't remember. I just know it was early. I was so moved by the spirit, all I could sit there and say is Father was pleading with Father, saying, Don't leave me behind. Don't let me miss this. Don't let me ignore that what you want to do. Let me be changed. Deliver me from the evil one. Deliver me from my pride and my arrogance. My angers, my lusts. All these things, deliver me from these things. Because the only thing that matters is ascending that hill of Yahweh and one day looking him in the face and him saying, well done. What else can matter? Everything, every bit of gain that we have on this earth it is meaningless if we don't have that. And I can see, I can see the change in myself because we, we plead before God, we wrestle with, before God, with God. With ourselves. Who are we going to be? Are we going to be the man that God, the people that God created us to be? Or are we going to go our own ways? 
Are we going to put our own desires, our own wants, our own fears, our own lusts, our, all of those things? Are we going to put all of those things before God? Or are we going to lay it all before him and say, Father, it's all yours. Every bit of it. I loved one of the stories that I heard from, from Asbury. And this young man was talking about how how he God confronted him on his on his pride and his arrogance. And I love the story how he said he said he took a picture of that seat where God was dealing with him on those things and he said he said that seat is my tombstone because that's where I died. That's where I died to what I want. That's where I died to my will. Because what are we living for? Are we living for, re for religion? Being able to call ourselves a Christian? Or are we living for God? Are we living for holiness and righteousness? The Bible says, Blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they will be filled. You know, I was talking today, or yesterday maybe. I said, this time that we live in right now feels like it feels like dry and thirsty we're on the verge of death because there's no water and just like when Moses struck the rock and water sprang forth That's what's happening now. I believe that fully with all my heart. This isn't... God is pouring out His Spirit to those who would recognize it and receive it. He said, I will pour out my, my Spirit on all flesh. But He didn't say that all flesh... All people would recognize it. It's up to us to taste and see, to recognize what he's doing in these last days. It's up to us to not be the skeptics, and it's us to, up to us to be the true believers. To search the Bible. To search His face. To repent before Him. To seek holiness and righteousness. To point everything that we are and everything that we do back to Him. I think it's pretty clear now. And God isn't going to force anybody to do anything. It's by choice. It's by belief. Choosing to believe in who He is. In His holiness. In His majesty. It's about waking up every single day and choosing to persevere. Not falling away. It's choosing to walk away from sin. He's choosing to say, Father, I can't handle this. I can't deal with this, but you can. I can't free myself, but you can. I can't carry this burden, but you can. He can. 
He always could. It's just too many times we take it on upon ourselves to say, no, no, I got this. I can do that. I'm self-sufficient. I don't need God. I don't need help. And we're all 100% wrong. Because the only way to the Father is through the Son. Is by relationship. There's no amount of works that you can do. It's the work that He wants to do on your heart. And everything will come out of that. But relationship is first, foremost, always. If we are not seeking a relationship with Yeshua, then what are we doing? Where are we going? And I can tell you where you're going. You're going about stumbling about in the dark on your own. Away from the shelter of the shadow of his wing. The only place that we can find rest. The only place that we can be safe. Now I encourage everyone who's listening to this, listen to what I'm saying. But honestly, I hope before God I'm not saying anything. I hope that everything is His words and to His glory. Because that's all that matters.